question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah is, um, it's related to a couple of the dicks. Not a real dicks, but just a bit of Did you ever call Bruce Walter or Bruno at any point? Just, just, just to see what his reaction would be. Uh, no, but I have referred to him as Walter Bruce Willis. <laughs> like I've introduced him someplace, and I just said, ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Penns Grove, New Jersey, Walter Bruce Willis. He didn't seem to care. Um, and Bruno, no, it never occurred to me to call him Bruno during the shoot, because our relationship on the shoot was, um, it wasn't traditional in the least. Not at least traditional when I think of the relationships I have with most actors. Um, directing Bruce I, I, is, is a weird experience in and of itself, because Bruce is a 25-year veteran. Um, Bruce has been doing what he's been doing for 25 years. In this business, longevity is next to impossible. Very few make it that long. You know, there are people like Humphrey Bogart, you know, fucking, uh, uh, um, what's his name, Cary Grant, uh, you know, probably Tom Hanks can be one of those dudes. And Bruce Willis is definitely one of those dudes. When you go to a video store in the next 20 years, you'll see a picture of him up on the wall to represent Hollywood action or something like that. He's an icon. The dude is Bruce Willis. He's the first guy to figure out that cops shouldn't carry their guns like this. <laughs> they're a cop worth their salt, they've got to carry it like this. <laughs> so... Bruce is much more than just an actor, you know? Bruce, like Bruce, we know Bruce can act, he's got range and whatnot. We've seen him do Unbreakable and Sixth Sense and whatnot. But sometimes Bruce just is a persona more than an actor, right? Like basically we know him as the cop, the guy, the hero cop. He's fucking John McClane. He's played John McClane and roles like John McClane so often that he is known for doing that. Just as Clint Eastwood was known for, you know, like playing a cowboy and shit like that, John Wayne a cowboy. This dude just found his fucking niche and fell into it, and has done a bunch of other stuff, but predominantly done a lot of this. <laughs> this movie, Couple of Dicks, is a movie in which we need a guy to do this. <laughs> and be funny. Um, so we bring Bruce in because Bruce comes from the world of comedy. To me, I always think of David Addison from Moonlighting before I think of John McClane, because that's how I was introduced to Bruce Willis. He was a comic actor. He was like... TV's version of Bill Murray, and then he became bigger than Bill Murray. Like, he was Bugs Bunny, come to life, a wry sensibility, to deliver dialogue real fast. He was the coolest guy on the planet, the guy he wanted to be. Um, so that was the dude I wanted to showcase in the flick, the comedic side. I wanted to get a little David Addison in there. And the part didn't call for a complete David Addison, but I wanted to get a little bit in there and whatnot. This dude has been doing this for so long, playing himself. There is nobody on this planet who could possibly tell him how to do it any better. And I tried. <laughs> I really tried. My first week of production, I just kind of went about it the way I went about it with all actors, you know, where it's just like they do a take, and then I go over, I'm like, hey man, that was great. I did this, I did this, that's awesome. There's this one line, can we go up on this point, go up on end, and then when you hit this, punch this really hard, and give that look before you deal with the first line. And he gives me that slow Bruce Willis head turn. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, cool. And he's like, all right, Kev, let's see what we could do. And I was like, okay, great. Everybody, let's go. Go on another one. I go back behind the monitor, sit down, action. And he does the same fucking thing he did in the previous day. <laughs> and I'm watching it going, that's weird. I guess he didn't hear me. <laughs> so I went back and I was like, okay, man, that was awesome. That rocked. Um, very much like the first one. Um, <laughs> what I'm looking for on this one, I'm going to punch her hand a little harder. And then don't forget that look right before that last line. You know that? And he's like, oh, okay, I got it. I got it. Thanks. Go back to the monitor, sit down, action. Same fucking performance. <laughs> and that's when you're like, oh, I get it. You know, Bruce is going to do exactly what Bruce is going to do because somewhere in Bruce's head, I'm sure Bruce is going, Kevin, I've been Bruce Willis for 25 years. <laughs> you can't teach me how to be Bruce Willis. You can't do it, you know? And I would, so I learned that, all right, this dude's the author of his own performance. I'm not going to fuck with it. I'll offer advice when I can. If he needs it, he asks me for shit, I'm definitely going to be there for him. But... Going over there and doing with him what I did with what I've done with every other actor I've ever worked with wasn't going to work. It's the first time in my life that I've worked with a movie star, a true movie star. Please don't tell Ben Affleck I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but it really was. Like Bruce Willis is an absolute iconic movie star who has been knee deep in a world of yes for 25 years. In the heyday of the world of yes, which was the 80s, man, where stars ruled Hollywood, where they'd start getting paid five, ten, 
15, where the numbers kept going up and shit like that, and movies rose and fell based on a name and whatnot. And he survived, dude. He's still there. Schwarzenegger went into politics, and T3 wasn't really happening anyway. <laughs> Rambo, you know, Stallone is still trying desperately to fucking make, bring back that fucking era of movies, and God willing, he can do it with the Expendables. That's pretty cool. And it looks pretty damn cool, but so far, he's had middling luck doing that. The people that follow Bruce, like Seagal and fucking John claude Van Damme, nowhere to be heard from them. <laughs> the dude is the last man standing, ironically, also in a movie of the same name. <laughs> Literally the last man standing. And the reason for that is because he has guided his career so expertly. Bruce has made a lot of bad movies. He'll be the first to tell you, it doesn't matter, he's still fucking standing, because he'll always do the stuff that you like, too. He knows, he knows that, like, Bread and butter, and what people love to see him as is this. <laughs> so, and he's great at it. So, like the notion of me telling him how to do it just washed over him weirdly, I guess. And he communicated that silently, and I got it pretty quickly. And most of the time, like we, he just kind of always stared at me in this bemused way of like, "How do you fucking breathe, even? You just <laughs> clearly don't know what you're doing, you know?" Like basically, there was one day we were shooting a car scene on stage. Um, instead of being out in the real world, we had to do it on soundstage for, for this one sequence. Blue screens are out, some shit. We did the master shot, you know, with the car sitting in place, but later on the footage would be behind it, looked like it's Did the master, it's Bruce, Tracy, Sean, Moore, Scott. We're coming around to do the close up on Bruce, so I come over and I'm like, uh, alright, Bruce, man, this time uh, we're on you, and it's gonna be like, I'd show him a frame. It's gonna be like this. And he goes, okay, what, 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 what lens are you putting up? And I go, um, <laughs> the one that shoots like that. <laughs> and he goes, well, what one's, what, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, oh, hold on, Dave, what lens is going up? Dave's like 50. I was like, 50. Dave says 50. And he goes, why did you ask Dave what lens is going up? And I was like, well, Dave's the one that knows all the lenses. <laughs> he's the DP, you see. And he's just like, do you know your lenses? <laughs> and I go, no. <laughs> I said, no, I never bothered to learn my lenses, dude. But that's how I communicate with Dave. I say, oh, it's this, or it's this, or this. And he figures out where my hands are and what the lens is. <laughs> and Bruce, at this point, even though he was looking at me, looked away just so that he could go. He's <laughs> an actor, don't forget. It's all about presentation. <laughs> so he looks at me, why is a ghost? And he goes, Come here, Kevin. Come here. I lean down, the car talks to me, he goes, Don't ever, ever tell anyone in this business that you, a director, doesn't know your lenses. People might not respect you after that. Some people. And I said, Oh, that's cool, Bruce. Nobody respects me anyway. Number one. I said, number two, it's kind of like a joke at this point. Like, you know, I'm 15 years in, I still don't even lose and learn my lenses. Like if I learn him now, the joke's over. And he's just like, there is a joke going on here. <laughs> and I was like, it's cool, man, it's cool. And he was just like, learn your fucking lens. And I said, I might. And I walked away. <laughs> so there was a lot of shit like that, where he was just like, how did you get this far? You know, and like, remember the episode of The Simpsons where, like, fucking Fred Grimes is like, ah! How does this happen? You know, and like, Ken, and then he dies fucking trying to be Homer. <laughs> Bruce was Fred Grimes, and I was Homer Simpson, you know? And, like, basically, through this career of mine, I worked very hard, and you can tell, and, and I, I put my heart into it and shit, but I don't know everything there is to know about filmmaking. I don't even know half of what there is to know about filmmaking. I figured I'd learn that as I've gone on, and so far my career has been pretty much attending film school in front of everybody while making films. So I never felt ashamed by that kind of thing. I was like, why did I learn the lenses? It's so fucking boring. <laughs>